Well, hey, Becoming Me, I'm so excited to introduce you to my warrior friend, Anastasia. And as I just learned, her real friends call her Stasia, and she invited me to do that. So I feel <laughs> super special. Just saying. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome, girl. I'm so glad that you got to join me today. Thank you. Yes, this is so exciting. I'm thrilled. I'm excited to share. Excited to see you for the first time. This is our first you're... virtual meet. Crazy. We lived... <laughs> maybe like an hour and a half, two hours away from each other mm -hmm. uh, for a while and had met through a nonprofit that we were both connected to. So we were literally like, okay, we got to meet up. We got to have coffee. And then 2020 happened. It got crazy. And then so nice. Asia just moved across the country. <laughs> I did. I moved to California. <laughs> just, just totally spontaneously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that coffee date might have to be pushed off a little bit, but I do have coffee and I'm glad that we're uh, Zooming. So this Girl, is, this is a treat. My heart. And I feel like yes. you know, we each other so well already. Yes. Like, a beautiful side of social media. So. Oh. Hey, for new friends in your corner, um, why don't we kick off with just a fun question? Like, who is Stasia? Who is Stasia? Um, you know, Stasia is a Jesus loving. New England born, coffee obsessed, you know, single woman. Hey, girl. Currently, currently, Ooh. happily single, but also open. You know, it's one of those. It's I'm one of those. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I am like totally, I'm a Cali girl, just recent. You know, it hasn't even been a year, but I'm still owning the Cali girl vibe. Um, you know, the 75 sunny all the time sort of vibe. Uh, yeah, I love reading. I love writing. I love journaling. I love all forms of creativity. Um, I dabble in like, you know, painting, watercolor, drawing sort of thing. Um, it just brings me joy. And love travel. Travel, that is huge for me. I've been all over the world, lived in Jerusalem for six months. Um, just like a what a magical country literally what a magical country but city oh. Jerusalem oh my gosh so so jealous lived there been all over just love travel um you know so yeah fun fun facts that. about Anastasia so I've got to ask now how do you drink your coffee just black Me and too. it's bet you too yes okay, I feel like we're few and far between literally Oh my gosh. Have you met um, Hannah Gronkowski yet? No. Okay. So she, I just shared her becoming story not too long ago and she drinks it black as well. And I had the same reaction when she shared that on her story. Like, like how, so, so another question, like a follow-up question I get when people ask me, how do you take your coffee? I say black, they say, how do you do it? And, you know, I think at a certain point, the answer is twofold. I used to like love you know, coffee with my milk, essentially. Like I used to like the lattes, the, you know, just a dash of coffee in there, but, but it's like mostly milk and sugar. Yep. And over time, I just started like weaning myself off of the milk. And now the coffee goes straight to the veins. I tell you what, and it's just like a quick turnaround time. <laughs> in the mornings, I have a cup and I'm good. One cup. That's it. That's all I need. Man, I oh. haven't uh, gone down to one cup. I'm still in the three oh. to five range, which is- You know what? I, res I respect that. <laughs> like all day. It's just constant black that's coffee a, for me. That's another. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> so my second question is, what is your next trip that you're either planning or you're hoping to do? My next trip. So I wanted, I've been doing more domestic travel, you know, with COVID and everything. So like want to get in my car and I want to go to um, um, Sedona. Ooh. Have you ever been? I have not. Apparently it's like a magical wonderland of nature. Mm. I, so that's where I want to go. It's like about, you know, six hour drive. Just going to like get in there and, and, and do it and make it like a writing retreat. Ooh. So I'm really excited. Oh I'm my really gosh, done. I cannot wait mm -hmm. to follow along on your Instagram. Yes. Oh, you know, I'll be telling you guys and bringing yeah. you guys with me. 
Yes, you guys, we will have Stasia's Instagram linked, but I got to yeah. tell you, like, I love the recent story you just did on your morning routine. And oh, your fry and your coffee. It looked so cozy. <laughs> I want to have morning coffee with you. I'm yes. Like, oh my gosh. Wait, one day. Yes. One day. one day. I love it. So fun. Well, I'm really glad that we get to chat and unpack your yeah. journey. You know, we're all about becoming me, who God designed us mm -hmm. to be. And so let's, let's just dive into what has made you who you are today. What's your story? Yeah. Um, first of all, I love this question. I think, you know, for many years of my life, this question would freak me out because I'd be like, where do I, where do I start? Yeah. I don't have a finish line that I can talk about. I feel uncomfortable about that. But I think now when I hear this story, God has done such a deep work in me. I tell you, I tell you what, I'm, I'm so open to just sharing the journey yeah. and like, and I, and that's what I love about your ministry. So thank you for this. Um, you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, but yeah, I mentioned, so I grew up in New England, right? Um, born in Boston, raised in New Hampshire, um, you know, raised a believer. So I went to church all throughout my youth. My grandfather was a Baptist preacher. Um, but where I lived in New Hampshire, it was very different, a very different demographic of people, a very different type of like church atmosphere. But nonetheless, I was raised reading the word and I was raised, you know, praying and very believing household. I only mention that because uh, from a young age, I felt seen by God. And I think that is maybe the greatest gift that my mother ever gave me um, was creating a, a, a space to where I would feel known, even if she wasn't always, cause she worked single mother, like worked all the time, literally just putting food on the table, providing for three children. Like by, by my age, my mother had three kids. I don't know what I would do with just one. Like really, I don't, I don't know. So <laughs> fearless, fearless. Um, so I had her example. I felt known by God. I and I just kind of like was a little fearless little, I don't know. I had a small group of friends and I was very, very fulfilled um, as a kid. I never felt the need to just like impress or try to be popular. That was just never really my, my story. Um, and I can see, you know, into adulthood, how that was so good for me as a kid and how that really allowed me to like move through some of the hard things um, that kind of came my way. So my father passed away when I was young. I was 11, 12, and he passed away. And even before that, uh, my parents got divorced. So it was, it was kind of, you know, visit one parent, go with the next parent. And even then my dad was kind of inconsistent with, with that. So, um, so losing a, losing your father young as a young black woman was kind of, it just was, it's really hard not having that father figure. Um, you know, it, it's hard no matter what yeah. race you are. It's just hard yeah. being a woman and being, you know, um, I, I wrote this uh, post like open letter to the fatherless daughter. And it was just all about um, my journey and how God really stepped into my story and became the provider that I I was looking for in a father, in an earthly father, my heavenly father became that. And I mean, in every way. Um, so like even, you know, entering into um, college, I went to college when I was 17. We really didn't have money to pay for school. And I just like went anyway, like I literally showed up to college love it. <laughs> in Florida <laughs> with, and I'm like, wait, in New England, right? I'm in Boston at the time. So like, show up in Florida. First time I'd ever traveled alone, my little suitcase with my pillow. And like, that was it. I'm going to college, everybody. And the Lord, like I had a balance, <laughs> like they literally shouldn't have let me in, <laughs> but, but, but God, um, you know, got a job on campus and just like that, I, I going to a Christian university, cause I decided to go to a faith-based university in Florida. 
And that was another defining moment in my life and the trajectory of my, of my journey. Um, and so many opportunities for God to just meet me. I mean, I really, my faith became my own in college in a way that I had never experienced before. And and it was the first time I started asking questions. Mm -hmm. Um, It was the first time that I, like, alone, like nobody was prompting me to ask God these questions. I didn't have a spiritual practice at that point. It was very much just like, read your devos and do it because someone told you. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I knew all these Bible verses in my head, all these Bible stories just from growing up in the church, but I did not know how to apply it to my life in a meaningful way. And a huge part of my journey was going to college and being comfortable asking questions of God. I mean, you know, God loves questions. Mm -hmm. God loves questions. Yes. (laughs) Like growing up and being in the church, when I would ask questions, they would be met with a humanly response. And I can't even be upset because we're human. And so I think it, it was hard for people to answer some of these questions that literally only God can answer for you. You know, um, so I started asking these questions of God. God is like speaking to me. And in college was the first time that I felt the Holy, that I, that I discovered that the Holy Spirit actually communicates with me. I literally had no idea. Wow. No idea at all. I thought the Holy Spirit spoke to other people and spoke to people in the Bible, but like, not me. And then when this, when this new discovery hit, actually I was in Jerusalem on a missions trip. How crazy is that? Wow. And, and that's when this like, I don't even know. It's like a download or something. I'm like, oh my gosh. I started having like these visions, these like dreams. I mean, it, it just, it literally radically changed my life. So, um, so amazing. But it wasn't until I kind of removed myself from the things that were familiar to me and comfortable and safe that I really was able to receive and humble myself and, and understand what you know the answers to these questions were so college was huge and transformational started on that new journey did my undergrad did my master's degree really just tried to stay at that place for as long as I could um is what I did (laughs) um but once I graduated I went to corporate America because I had this vision for my life right I was like this is my little plan I want to go to work in a suit every day Okay. And I want to have my computer and two phones, Ooh, fancy. Uh, you know, my personal phone and a business phone. Mm. Like I want, you know, and I had this like idealized climb the corporate ladder, become a CEO type mindset. So I get into corporate America and it's like, you know, I'm on like ladder number one, I'm like an admin assistant and um, climbed it pretty quickly, like 10 months promoted, making crazy money for a 23 year old kid. And suddenly I, well, I just, I started, I I don't know how this even happened. I had this like burning desire to like share my experiences in corporate America because there was so much that nobody taught me in school so much. Um, So I started, I started a blog and I started writing about everything and anything I had learned, um, like deep things I'd been thinking about. Um, I just started blogging and it wasn't shortly after that where I like really found and started owning my voice and writing and publishing it. I journaled for years. I literally have journals decades back. And when I started writing and publishing my work, something activated in me. I don't even know you know what I'm talking about. Like, I really know what you you're get about. it. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Just like a massive, like a shift in my spirit and my soul, like a connection happened. And then my whole perspective on what I wanted in life started changing. Yes. Started changing. And so now, just this is me, you know, I don't know, 24, 25 
we in corporate America leading these meetings with these like big wigs in my organization, looking around the conference room table and, and literally thinking to myself, I don't want anybody's life in this room. Beautiful people, great people. Yeah. A lot of them, I'm sure, living in their zone of genius and they are just fulfilled. I didn't want that. Yeah. And so I just had to like come to terms with the fact that like, yes, I could have that life, but I don't want it and I can choose. And the Holy Spirit was very um like I say vocal, but like it just wouldn't leave me alone. This this feeling of like un- self imposed unfulfillment. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I left. I took a thirty thousand dollar pay cut and I left. Gave five days notice. I just was like, I can't anymore. And um, and it's been the wildest journey. I mean, ups, downs, setbacks, opportunities. Um, really, really hard situations. I was fired from an organization definitely racially motivated. I don't know what else to say about it. I just, it was very hard, but like through it all, the most powerful thing for me in deciding what moves to make with my one life Mm -hmm. has been listening to the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. and, and obeying without hesitation. And the more that I reject the security that the nine to five offers me or the, the security that, you know, impressing the big wig so I keep my job offers me or the security of wiping, swiping things, sweeping things under the rug for the sake of going along to get along. And, you know, rejecting those things and like choosing the path led by the Holy Spirit for your one life. Like that is, I would say that's the common thread throughout all of my, all of my kind of I love story. That. I love that. And you know, now I'm sure many of us are wondering, okay, you just, you quit, you gave your five oh. day notice, you're obeying God, you're hearing what he's saying. So what did you do next? Like, what do you do now? So I, so after that, I um, started working at a university, short stint. A okay. very similar thing happened to where I was like, this also just isn't it. Like, what am I looking for? What is it? What am, what am I running toward? Mm-hmm. But I just obeyed. Yep. Just obeyed, doing the very next thing, doing the very next thing, taking one step at a time. And now, my, all I do, this is, this is just like operating in my zone of genius is help people, motivate people to take the very next step in owning their voice, embracing their calling, and specifically showing up online Mm. unapologetically, just in a way that is confident. Um, And it's hard, you know, exploring the digital space, especially if you are an inspired, but like timid creative helping those people show up online in a way that is confident is is walking out whatever their zone of genius is sharing whatever art they create um and that is my path that is my journey creating these helping people facilitate and like bring their art to the world online i love that. that's the short of it yeah <laughs> So cool. And I love how you just described like, because I think often there's this misconception that we need to figure out the answer before we take that step of obedience. And through the threads of the journey, you just unpacked, you just obeyed and took the next step in front of you. Yes. You didn't have to figure out the whole end game. Yes. I'm sure as you look at each of those threads and chapters, you've discovered something unique about Stasia in that moment that then led to the next step. Absolutely. Yeah, you you just hit the nail on the head. Like I think along that process of learning how to listen to and create space for the Holy Spirit to speak and to hear and then to understand throughout that process, I have had to unlearn so much uh-huh. and then relearn so much. <laughs> um 
And I think at the end of the day, I read this in a, I believe it's a John Eldridge book. God is making us whole and holy. Mm -hmm. And as much as we'd like to think that the journey is always about one thing, as much as we'd like to think the journey is always about fulfillment in work, or the journey is always about fulfillment in faith, the journey is actually about making you whole and holy again, and making all of us whole and holy again, making this world whole and holy again. It's like, and it's so Mm countercultural. And I think sometimes being a believer, it can feel like pop culture and, you know, the patriarchal society, like the things that like people tell you to be or, you know, encourage you to like the things they encourage you to wear or do or say, or how they want you to move in the world or how, you know, it's all about security. It's all about knowing what the journey is before you start. It's all about like, you know, it's so countercultural to live a spirit led life. Oh yeah. And nobody's like, who is out there empowering you to do this and encouraging you to do this? If anything, it's you putting on the armor of God and doing it. Yep. You know? Okay, girl. I love it. (laughs) I love that. You know, if you were having a cup of black coffee, no no cream, you know, we're just- No cream, no sugar, just black- (laughs) Exactly. You're having a cup of coffee with somebody and you were trying to encourage them on their own journey. What would you say? Oh, this is a really good, I loved this. Um, Okay. I would say, you know, we are co-creators with Christ. We have been given this authority to be co-creators with Christ. And while it may feel like a lonely road, Um, the art that you have within you to bring to the world is divinely given to you. Your dreams, your goals, your passions are not mine. They are, we have very different dreams and goals and passions, but we are both equally equipped, empowered, and responsible to walk those things out. So be brave, be very courageous, have strength, be bold, and do it because we're in this together. I love that. Yeah. So good. You know, if somebody was watching your story today and they're like, man, I got to connect with Stacia online, where can they yeah. find you? Okay. So definitely start with my Instagram. Yes. Um, at Anastasia RJD. If you click the link in my bio, there is um, 50 questions to reignite your creativity. I love that. I just came up with 50 like really good introspective questions for anyone that feels like inspired but like timid or afraid to bring what they have to the world or afraid to start something new so those 50 questions are really awesome um and then if you go to perennialbrand.co that is my blog um, my website and yeah you can always email me hello Mm -hmm. at (laughs) stasiarose.com I love it. We'll have all of those links in the notes as well. So you guys can easily connect with yes. this has been so refreshing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't what wait to get in real life with you. No, Stacia. we're going to do it. Please come out to Cali once yes. this is all over, please. <laughs> Girl, you know, I will. And when you're back, okay. that, you let me know. I absolutely will. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your story, girl. Thank you.